Turn with me, if you will, to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse number 7. And the word of God reads as follows. But we have this uh, treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. When we look at uh, Paul the Apostle, we see uh, he, he's writing this letter to the church at Corinth. And of the things he was doing in that uh, letter is he's uh, defending his uh, ministry. He's defending his uh, apostleship because of the things that were accused of him was being a false uh, man of God. So he's telling the uh, church of uh, Corinth at this time the things that he had uh, and we're going through. And in doing that, there's many things that we can re relate to that happen in our own lives. So again, as mentioned before, when we look at the book of uh, 2 Corinthians, the book of 2 Corinthians is a, a book, if you will, of consolation. A, a book of uh, comfort. So if you're uh, going through a certain things in your life, if you're going through certain things, and you're going through certain things, which I'm sure that you are going through certain things, and you want to be assured that there are things that you're going to go through in the, the future. When we look at St. John chapter 16 and verse number 33, Jesus said, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. So uh, things might be going good now. You might be young and strong, and everything uh, feels like it's going okay, but trouble's on the way. Amen. And Jesus said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So one of the things that you want to do on your Christian journey, you want to embrace the principles, the biblical concepts in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians so that you might receive the consolation, so that you might receive uh, the comfort that God would have you to receive as you're going on this uh, Christian journey. Uh, a journey. Now, when we look at this uh, message for a, a, a few moments, again, we understand that there are things that are happening in your life, things that you're going through. God lets us know that. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13, there has no temptation taken you except that which is common to man. So you're going through things because it's common. But what you want to understand, what we're looking at, what the, the focus is on, if you'll notice, is the excellency of the power of God. You want to realize, when we look at that word excellence there, that word excellency, you want to realize that God's power, when we look at Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20, Ephesians 3 and 20, it lets us know that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. Now, you want to think about that. And then it says, according, now watch this, it says, according to the power that works in us. So the question for Brother Jenkins, and we want to grow, you want to grow in asking yourself questions. So of the question that you want to ask yourself is, am I allowing, 
And how am I going to grow in allowing God's power to work in me so that he can do? See, the problem isn't God. The problem is his Brother Jenkins who's coming short. God has the power. You want to realize, again, that that word excellency means the abundance. It means the preeminence. What it means is that God's power is supreme over anything, anything that you're going through. God's power. So it said, but we have this uh, treasure. And what's the treasure? The treasure is the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His life, his death, his burial, and resurrection so that you could have a chance to eternal life. That's the treasure. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this a treasure in clay pots. We have this treasure in these frail physical bodies that we have. Why? So that the excellency, the supremacy of the power, the source, that word power is the same word where we get our English word dynamite. Mm. That word power me is the Greek word, and we don't have to know Greek, is the word dunamis. God's power is dynamic. God's power is explosive. And God's power is supreme over anything that can happen to our, your lives. And that's the uh, focus, if you will, uh, this morning. Going on, the excellency of the power. The title of this message, God's Power When You Need It. God's Power When You Need It. Going on, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 8. He says, we are hard pressed on every side. And the emphasis here, as we go on looking, the emphasis here is there's conflicts on the outside and not just on the outside, but also internally also. So thus, when we are going through things, we are hard-pressed. That word hard-pressed is the Greek word flebo. It means to be crowded. It means to afflict. It means to suffer tribulations. It means to uh, trouble, if you will. On every side, again, the emphasis is not only externally, but internal. So again, you have conflicts. Uh, people are doing things that they shouldn't be doing, and it's causing you issues. There's events that happen in your life, and you have a certain set of uh, circumstances externally, and then not only are the conflicts on the outside, but there's conflicts on the inside. So the conflicts, possibly, is I'm depressed. I'm worried. I'm in despair. I feel anxious. I'm nervous. I don't know if I'm going to make it through this one. So there's conflicts outside, externally, and then internally. Notice 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 5. What up? Uh, Paul says, he says, our bodies had no rest. Sometimes we can't get no rest because of things that are happening. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can't even sleep. You're trying to sleep, but you can't sleep. Mm -hmm. And no, you need to sleep, but you can't. Just restless. Getting up, pacing back and forth. Sometimes just laying there, and you lay at one point, and then an hour, two hours later, you realize you never even went to sleep. Sometimes that happened. Our bodies had no rest. But we were troubled on every side. Outside were conflicts. Inside were fears. So conflicts again on the outside and the inside. But when you look at God's power, yet not crushed. Notice again, a pressure. Yet God always makes a way for us to escape. He makes a way for Brother Jenkins to escape. The question is, will I take the way? The emphasis is, uh, uh, again, 
to be hindered costly, cramped, distressed, a narrow place from which there is no escape. But God makes a way. So thus, you're not hemmed in. You're not cramped. You're not distressed. You're not in that narrow place where there is no escape. You're not crushed. So thus, you're squeezed by what's happening. And there's pressures on the outside. And there's pressure on the inside. But yet, you're not crushed. Why? Because of God's divine power. Again, we're focusing on God's divine power. Yes, there's things that happen, but God's power is supreme over what's happening in your life. Again, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He's not crushed. Paul is, we're talking about Paul now. He's not crushed to the point where he is, now, and this is an important point, where he is unable to do the Lord's work. I know of some. That even when they're in the hospital, even when they're in the hospital, they share the gospel with somebody in the hospital. Not crushed to the point where you, you can't do God's work. When we look at Acts chapter 4 and verse number 19, Paul is stoned in Lystra by the Jews of Antioch and Iconium. And he was stoned, and they drug him out of the city. They thought he was dead. Mm -hmm. Then when we look at 1 Corinthians 14, 20 through 24, Paul gets up. The next day he preaches the gospel. And now when you were stoned in that day, they didn't throw no pebbles at you. Mm -hmm. You were stoned by boulders. Mm -hmm. They thought he was dead. He gets up. The next day he preaches the gospel in Derby. Then he goes back to Lystria where they stoned him. And then he goes to Iconium and Antioch where the Jews that came from Antioch and Iconium to Lystria to stone him. And he goes there and he strengthens the disciples. Glory be to God. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse number 8. We are perplexed. Sometimes, in the things that we're going through, we don't know what to do. We don't know whether to go to the left. We don't know whether to go to the right. And we want to do the right thing. We want to do what's right. So we want to continue to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And sometimes, and sometimes it seems like more often and sometimes, People are constantly doing things to us. So we, we wonder, am I being too hard? If I do this, will I be uh, unloving? Should I be hard or should I be, uh, should I be firm or should I be gentle? How should I present the uh, truth to this person so that I can encourage them Versus the, the person taking it the wrong way from my intentions. So that the person doesn't read me the wrong way. So sometimes we don't know. So sometimes we're confused. That, that word perplexed means at a loss mentally. It means to doubt. Not knowing what to do. You're uncertain. The ordinary word usage was that of a creditor bringing somebody to financial ruin. And sometimes, spiritually, the things that are happening in our lives, it's as if and sometimes we feel that we're being absolutely ruined spiritually. Sometimes we have those feelings. Sometimes Brother Jenkins has those feelings. Like he's ruined spiritually. But yet, it says not in despair. So that means, to be in despair it means to be utterly at a loss. So thus it means uh, to be uh, hopeless. Uh, 
So sometimes we're stressed out, but not in despair, meaning you're not utterly at a loss, you're not hopeless, you might be stressed, but notice, not stressed out. We're talking about God's power. And the reason why we're emphasizing God's power, because sometimes we feel, I'm stressed out. Well, Brother Jenkins, why are you stressed out? Are you allowing God's power to have the supremacy over your life? If I'm stressed out, then that means I'm not, because I'm not in despair. So, now watch this. Versus being in despair because I'm confused, I'm actually jumping for joy. I'm jumping for joy. Now, what's the joy? Again, when we look at James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Now, watch what James says. 1, 2 through 4. It says, my brethren, count it, okay, estimate it, all joy. That word joy means, the, a definition of joy means extension. A definition of joy means extension. Now, what does that mean? It means God is extending himself to you. Not only is he extending his power to you, but he's also extending himself to you. So you're counting, you're estimating it, you're calculating it. When you're perplexed, when you're going through those things and you don't know what to do, you're calculating it that God is extending himself to you. So thus, when you're going through what you're going through, the mindset is, I'm jumping because God is right here. Amen. God is with me, and his power is with me. Now, why? Is it because you like going through things? No, because of what you know. Count it all joy when you fall into adverse temptations. Knowing that the trying, and that's God, the trying of your faith works patience. It works preservation. It works endurance. So that you develop the quality to go through what you're going through in the way God would have you to go through it without waving, if you will, the white flag, I surrender, I give up. It helps you develop that quality of perseverance that you might be what? That you might be more like Jesus. Well, what do you mean? It says that you might be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. Who is that? That's Jesus. He was perfect and entire. He lacked nothing. Persecuted. That word persecuted means to make to run, to flee, to chase with hostility, to aggressively chase. It means to hunt down. When we look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8, God says, be sober. What he means by being sober, he means be an uh, accurate mind. And the only way that Brother Jenkins and you can grow in being accurate minded is we have to be in the word of God. We have to complete the rest. We have to grow. Brother Jenkins, I know I have to grow in reading the word of God, applying it to my life, memorizing the word of God. Yes, Brother Jenkins has to work more on his memory work. Because there's too many times when Sister Jenkins asks Brother Jenkins for a scripture, and Brother Jenkins says, I don't remember that one. See, what happens in our lives, we get too busy for ourselves. Not saying that we're doing wrong things, but we get too busy. And there's scriptures that I used to know, like the back of my hand, I'm saying, I don't remember that one. And it's, 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 it's not because I'm getting old. That's not the excuse. It's not. Thank you, Brother Bravo. Because the mind that continues to exercise itself stays young. The mind that continues to seek to memorize the scriptures 
grows in the ability of memorizing scriptures. I can uh, praise God for Brother Maxwell. Praise God for a Brother Maxwell. I have the, 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 the blessing. He's, I believe he's in his 90s. I have the, the, the blessing of, of being with him occasionally. I go out with him to lunch, and he's sharp. Yeah. He, he, he could quote those scriptures. He'd be quoting them, and he's 90 years old. So it's not about Brother Jenkins getting old. It's about Brother Jenkins has to go back to the memory book. So we have to memorize the word of God so that we can continue to uh, meditate upon it because God lets us know in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 23. Thank God for that one. As keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 23 and 7. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if I don't know the scriptures, I can't think on the scriptures. I can't be sober-minded. So 1 Peter 5, 8, God says, be sober, be diligent, be serious. Have that effort, extreme effort. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks around. Now, how does he walk around? He walks around as a roaring, roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. But he walks around as a roaring lion. Now, what I've heard, what I've learned is that a roaring lion, once he roars, he's got you. Mm -hmm. See, he's, he's not going to roar before he gets you. Once he roars, he's got you. Because he, he, see, he's laying in wait. He, the way a lion hunts, he lays in wait and he studies and he watches your moves. And then when you're in the position for him to pounce on you, he pounces on you and he roars. I got this one. The you know, adversary, the devil, as a warring lion, walks about to and fro, seeking whom he may devour, whom he may swallow up whole. God doesn't want that to be you. I don't want that to be me. So you're, you're persecuted. But it, when you look at Galatians chapter 1 and 13, Paul talks about he, how he used to persecute uh, people. He says, for you heard of my former conduct, my lifestyle in Judaism, how I persecuted the church, beyond, persecuted the church of God beyond measure, and tried, notice he tried to destroy the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will never be destroyed. Amen. Amen. You're persecuted. The devil's haunting you. But God is with you. Amen. He's there. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're not forsaken. God is there. Amen. Matthew 28, verse number 20. Lord, with you always, even unto the end of the age. He's with you. Hebrews 13, 5. God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's given his faithful children that promise. Yet, Jesus was separated that we might be connected. Glory be to God. He was separated from the Father, and he did no wrong. He cried out on the cross, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Now, he knew the answer to the question. But he cried. The, 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 the pain that it caused him, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was forsaken for us, yet God has given us a promise. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 5.20 one, for God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. For what reason? That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Thus, as we continue, 2 Corinthians 4, 9. Struck down. Sometimes life gives you a blow, and it knocks you down to the ground. A blow that knocks you down to the ground, and you just looking up in the air. I've been there. 
might not be as intense as yours, but I, I've been there. And again, Brother Jenkins, and some of you know this, in seeking for us to encourage one another. Uh, Brother Jenkins has said, and several of y'all can testify to this in your mind, I've told you that with the things that you're going through, it's a testimony of your spiritual strength because as a, a faithful child of God, if you couldn't handle it, God wouldn't allow you to go through it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. So it's a testimony of your strength when you're going through things. Sometimes life gives you, that means to be cast down. It means to be thrown down. Sometimes this just came to my mind. The uh, life gives you a body slam. Mm -hmm. Slams you down to the ground. Struck with enough force to be knocked to the ground. You might get knocked down, but remember, with God's power, you are not knocked out. Amen. You are not knocked out. You, you're still in the race. You still have the victory in Christ. Now, you might not feel like it, but you have the victory in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, and that's the only place where the victory is. Amen. We was talking this morning, and we was talking this morning, uh, me and Sister Lopes and Sister Lee, okay, this morning, and with the tragedy that's going on around the world, we see what's happening, okay? Things happening, and there's, there's, so, there's so many things happening in the world, and uh, again, if Br Brother Jenkins is scaring you, okay? I'm seeking, the reason why Brother Jenkins mentions these things, because glory be to God, I'm trying to scare you out of the fire. I'm trying to scare you out of the fire. I want you to make it. God wants you to make it. So that's the reason why at times Brother Jenkins brings these things up so you can realize and say, and sometimes I need that wake up call. I need to get serious because of the way things are happening around the world and the way, and it's such a tragedy and it breaks my heart at, at sometimes how I can see, and I know it breaks your heart also, how other people can be so abusive to other people. Mm. It's, it's, it hurts your heart. The atrocities that are happening uh, around the world. How other human beings can be so cruel and heartless against their fellow human beings. <laughs> Things that when you see them, I say, I don't even want to see. I don't even want to see that. It brings tears in your eyes. Yet again, the reason why Brother Jenkins mentions these things because I want you to go to heaven. I want you to realize the seriousness of where we are. So again, Sister uh, Leah and Sister Lose, we were talking and talking about, and there's so many things happening. She said to, Sister Lope said to me, you heard about what's happening in California. No. <laughs> Every time you turn around, something is happening. There's so many things happening, you can't keep up with what's happening anymore. Yeah. You can't keep up with them. You might watch the news to know what's going on, but it's heartbreaking just to look at the news. But you need to be informed. You need to know what's happening so that you can take the necessary actions. So, talking about what's happening in California, so the conversation what went, uh, yeah, so many things are happening in different places around the world, and it seems like there's nothing happening in New York. So, uh, 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 again, we remember about 9-11, okay? Yet, besides 9-11, okay, 
what's the grand scale thing that's happened in New York? And here's the thing. When it comes, what is it going to be? Yeah, we know what the foreign countries are saying. Russia, China, Korea. Let us, let us be right with God. Let us, let us all be right with God. Because again, the, the, the point is that if the bombs fly, it's been said that if there's a nuclear war, nobody wins. Nobody wins. So the only ones that will have the victory are those that are faithful in Christ Jesus. See, man might have the power to touch your body, but God is in control of the soul. So th that's what's going to count in, in, in eternity. I saw, the, I, I know we're, we're uh, used to time. Okay, I, I, I looked, uh, I, I, I saw the news, and it, 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 it talked about uh a woman, and she was a manager of Walmart. Some of you might have seen it, and it said she she, she was arrested. It said she was an ex-manager of Walmart. Now, how she did this? So she was an ex-manager. I don't know. She was arrested because she stole one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. So I I, I I I thought two things came to my mind right away. I uh, I said to myself. Is 135000 worth it to go to jail? And then spiritually I thought about it. Is anything worth it for you to lose your soul? Mm -hmm. Is anything worth it? Anything worth it? Anybody worth it for you to lose your soul? And the answer is no. Because, uh, again, we're not talking about this temporary stuff that's happening here. We're talking about eternity. Where there's no ending. Struck down, but not destroyed. That, to be uh, struck down, not destroyed, means to destroy fully, to perish, to die. That's not your state in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you want the eternal victory? It comes by hearing about the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, believing it, repenting of sin, confessing Christ, being baptized, being faithful unto death. As we stand and sing the song of the